So students, today we are starting our topic rationalization of Koyak model, the adaptive expectations model. In the last lecture, we have done the Koyak model with the ad hoc method. Today we are rationalizing the Koyak model with the adaptive expectations model. So let's suppose ki there is an equation qyt is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xt plus ut. So it means ki we are talking about here y as a demand for money. Means this demand for money is the, the real cash balance we are talking about. And xt is the equilibrium or optimum or expected long run or normal rate of interest. So it means ki we are talking about that the demand for money is dependent on the normal rate of interest. Okay, so this is the stuff that we are talking about. We are talking about ki demand for money, that is this, this is the function of the xt, xt star. xt star means we are expecting it. Ki this is the normal rate of interest on which the demand for money will be dependent on. Okay, so this is what we are talking about in our today's lecture. So let's suppose ki this is an equation. I'm saying ki this is equation first. Now, since we know that the x t star, this is not observable. Okay, so this particularly not directly observable. So what we can do? We can create a hypothesis. Hypothesis of the difference between two years of expectation of normal rate of interest will be the function of what? The gamma into may xt minus xt minus 1 and this is hypothesized. This is the expected one. Okay. So we are saying here the difference between the two years expectation of normal rate of interest is some fraction of the current year normal rate of interest. What is the actual? This is see without star x is the actual one. This is like actual rate of interest we are talking about. This is like with x with star is the expected rate of interest we are talking about. So on a yearly basis, we must be having some kind of expectations regarding the normal rate of interest. Ki today, let's you know this year, let's suppose we have ten percent of expectation. Ki will be our rate of interest generally in our economy. Next year, we expect it as a 12% or 9%. So, actual can be different from the expected one. Actual can be 9% or 11%. Okay. So, this is stuff that is I am talking about. If you are talking about the actual rate of interest, then we are putting here xt. If you are talking about expected rate of interest, then x star t or x star t minus 1. If you are talking about the last year, expected rate of interest. Okay. So we are hypothesizing this as a second equation where the difference between two years of expected rate of interest is equal to the, the fraction of this year actual rate of interest minus me last year expected rate of interest. So here the gamma is greater than zero and less than equal to one. Okay. And gamma here is the coefficient of expectation. This is the coefficient of expectation. So this hypothesis is known as adaptive expectation or progressive expectation or error learning. So this hypothesis is called adaptive expectation or progressive expectation or error learning hypothesis. Okay. This was popularized by Kagan and Friedman. This hypothesis was popularized by Kagan and Friedman basically. Now, what does this second equation implies? This second e equation implies that the economic agents will adapt their expectations in the light of past experience and that in particular, they will learn from their mistakes. What I am saying, economic agents will adapt their expectations in the light of past experience and that in particular, they will learn from their mistakes. That is what this hypothesis is talking about. So what is the another way to write down this particular equation? How we can rewrite this second equation? We can rewrite it as this. Let's suppose we are opening the second equation. We write, we wrote it down as this. The gamma xt minus xt minus 1. This one is star. Okay. 
the expectation from the last year. This is expectation from the current year. And this is the actual current year normal rate of interest. Okay. Now, how can we rewrite this? We need to expand this equation first. Let, let's expand it. So, this is gamma xt minus gamma x star t minus 1. Okay. So, now again, we will take this equation to the right side. This will become plus x t minus 1 and this is x star t minus 1. This will be gamma x t minus if we will put it likewise 1 minus gamma into me x star t minus 1. So, this is the third equation that we have got into. So, by rewriting the second equation, this is the third equation that we have drafted as of now. So, what does this equation shows? This equation shows that the expected value of rate of interest at time t, the expected value of rate of interest at time t is the weighted average of the actual rate of interest and the value of expected rate of interest in the previous year with the weight gamma and 1 minus gamma. So, this is what this equation is teaching us. Now, what will happen if gamma is equal to 1? See, if gamma will be equal to 1, then what will happen? The expected rate of interest will be equal to the, the current year rate of interest. There will be no difference between the expectations and the current rate of interest. It means the expectations are realized immediately. Expectations are realized immediately. And fully. Then what will happen if the value of gamma is equal to 0? If gamma will be equal to 0, it means the expected rate of interest at the time t will be equal to the expected rate of interest at the time t minus 1. What does this mean? The expectations are static. The expectations are static. Means the conditions which are prevailing today will remain same in the future as well. That is, that will happen if the value of gamma will be equal to 0. Now, if we substitute the third equation in the first equation, then what we will get? So, this is the third equation that we got. Okay. This is the third equation that we got. Now, I am rewriting the third equation once again. This is the third equation that we got. Now, if we will put this third equation in the first equation that we wrote at previous, which was this one. So, if we will put the value of x star t here, so this equation will become y t equal to may beta 0 plus may beta 1. Then we will write all this equation instead of x star t that is gamma x plus 1 minus gamma x star t minus 1 plus may ut. So, again by opening it, we will get the equation yt is equal to beta 0 plus may b1 gamma xt plus may b1 1 minus gamma x star t minus 1 plus may ut. So, this is the fourth equation. Now, we have to lag the first equation and multiply it by 1 minus gamma and subtract the product from this fourth equation. What I am saying, I am repeating myself. I am saying ki we have to take a one lag of first equation. This is the first equation that we had, this one. So, one lag is y t minus 1 is equal to beta 0 plus me beta 1 t minus 1 x star t minus 1 plus me u t minus 1. This is one lagged form of first equation. We have to multiply this equation by the 1 minus gamma, both side. So, let's multiply it. 1 minus gamma into me y t minus 1 plus me 1 minus equal me 1 minus gamma beta 0 plus me 1 minus gamma beta 1 x t minus 1 plus me 1 minus gamma u t minus 1.
Now we have to subtract the product from equation fourth. Now this is the fourth equation that we have, and this is the this is the equation that we got now. Okay, so we need to subtract this from this fourth equation. So after subtracting it, we will get what? We will get y t is equal to gamma beta zero plus gamma beta one x t plus one minus gamma y d minus one plus me v t. And what is v t here? V t is equal to u t minus one minus gamma u t minus one. Okay, so this is v t. This is the error term we are talking about. So now, when we were talking about the first equation, so in first equation, the one was measuring the average response of y to a unit change in x star. Okay, means the equilibrium or long run value of x. But here, the gamma beta one measures the average response of y to a unit change of actual or observed value of x. Okay. So now this particular beta coefficient, this particular coefficient, regression coefficient will measure the average change in yt in response to unit change in the actual normal rate of interest. Earlier in the first equation, we were measuring the average change in yt due to unit change in expected normal rate of interest. So now by transforming each and everything that we have done in these equations, we have come to the part where now we can observe the average change in yt with the help of the actual or observed rate of interest, not with the expected rate of interest. So this is what we got from, from rationalizing the Koyak model by the adaptive expectation model. That's it. So this was the last equation that we have got into. So we have come from this equation to this last equation. So what is the difference between two equations? First, to see the average change in yt, first we need to have, initially we need to have the expected rate of interest. But if we transformed our equation as such, okay, now to see the average change in the yt, means average change in demand for money or real cash balances, we need to see only the xt, not x star t. xt means the actual or observed rate of interest. Now, with the help of only actual rate of interest, we can see how the demand for money will change. Okay. So, by transforming, we have come to this particular situation. Okay. That's it for the rationalization of the Koyak model, the adaptive expectations model. Thank you.